Hello, I'm Kristen and my colleague Emily and I are going to tell you about a journal migration at the University of Western Ontario in Canada. This migration was from the BPress Digital Commons platform to the Public Knowledge Project's Open Journal Systems platform. I'll start here with some background about our journal publishing program and why we decided to migrate journals. Uh, but we're not going to talk much about the migration itself. What we want to focus on here are the experiences of editors and librarians now that we're on OJS. So we briefly surveyed our journal teams this spring, and Emily will tell you about the survey and what editors told us, and then I'll wrap up with the librarian's perspective after the migration. So our library has been a BPress customer since about 2008, and we're probably its largest uh, customer in Canada. A big part of why BPress has been good for us is that its digital commons platform does three things in one platform. It's the repository, it gives workflow and publishing for theses and dissertations, and it provides journal hosting. And for many years, we had one librarian who managed all three of these components. Usually that person was supporting digital commons in addition to other job responsibilities. So over time, unsurprisingly, this became too much for one person. In spring 2017, we decided to separate out responsibilities for journal hosting, and I took on that work. In August 2017, just a few months later, BPress announced that they had been acquired by Elsevier. So this prompted questions and discussion for us about continuing to use their Digital Commons platform. I personally felt, as did most of my colleagues and many librarians generally, um, that this was not such a positive change, that this was a move by a large commercial publisher to co-opt open access for profit. However, BPress offers a fully hosted platform in addition to one that does those three things in one. So they do hosting, technical support, and customer support, customer support for journal editors, uh, not just for librarians, it's all included in their service. Our library does not have the technical capacity to adopt open source, locally hosted repository or thesis publishing software. But we discovered that we would be able to move journal hosting largely because of our provincial consortium and their scholars portal service, which provides hosting for OJS. And you can attend um, their presentation from Bart and Caitlin at scholars portal this Friday in the last session of the day to learn more about their service. I was also familiar with OJS from my work as an editor of the Canadian Journal of Academic Librarianship. So OJS is, um, feels to us like a more open platform because it's open source and it feels more connected to the open access community. So it felt more aligned with our values as a library publisher. We also expected that OJS would work better for multilingual journals and that it would be easier for editors to customize their journal sites because the platform isn't proprietary. BPress limits how much customization editors can do and requires that certain changes be done by their staff. We also expected that hosting with OJS would allow us as librarians to provide more tailored support for journal teams because if they were no longer going to BPress staff with questions, we would then have a better sense of what they needed. So by November 2017, we had decided to migrate our then 26 journals to OJS. And we didn't have a firm deadline for our migration uh, because we are still a BPress customer and we're not going to lose access to the platform. So a majority of our journals moved over 2018, several more in 2019. And then finally in 2020, uh, last fall, the last two journals went live on OJS. And we've added uh, 11 journals over that time span as well. So we now host 37 journals on OJS. And now Emily will talk about the survey that we sent to editors this spring. So to gauge whether journal editors have since experienced the benefits that we anticipated from the migration, we surveyed them on their experiences using each platform in March of this year. Now the survey was short and it focused on whether they missed any key features from Digital Commons, how helpful they find select features from OJS, the general use of each platform or ease of use of each platform, and the length of time it took them to feel comfortable with OJS. We received 33 total responses, 12 of which were from editors who had used BPress's Digital Commons. 
So that left 21 respondents who had become editors of their journal only since it moved to OJS, meaning that they didn't have experience with digital comments to report on. So what did we learn from the survey? Well, our biggest takeaway was that the two platforms were rated pretty similarly, according to how easy editors found it to navigate the back end of each. The back end being where they manage publishing workflows and edit or customize their public facing journal pages. 75% of the editors who reported on digital commons deemed the back end very easy or moderately easy to use. That's compared to 74% of editors who reported the same for OJS. So neither platform really came away as the obviously more user friendly platform. Now, when it comes to key features available with each platform, editors who reported on their experience with digital commons listed the map of visitors and downloads and the at a glance table in the dashboard, which would show the status of each submission as the features that they missed the most. Other features that editors reported missing, although to a lesser degree, were the automatic pre-deadline review reminders that the system would send to reviewers and the ability for authors to upload new submission files after their initial submission. These answers didn't exactly come as a surprise to us because we have heard similar nostalgia for these features since um, and even during the migration itself. Now, as for OJS, editors find the ability to edit public facing pages themselves and the availability of support from Western librarians to be the most helpful features of OJS. Other features in OJS, on the other hand, produced a much more mixed response. For example, the ability to work and add content in multiple languages, since not all journals have a need for this, the ability to create and post announcements, and the ability to customize their journal's appearance with themes and CSS. So while increased flexibility and control over journal customization is a key distinction between OJS and Digital Commons, we found that many editors are not currently leveraging this feature to the full extent. Together, these re survey results tell us a few things. First, the fact that the two platforms were rated fairly similarly highlights and confirms that our decision to migrate the journals from Digital Commons to OJS was very much a values-driven decision. As Kristen said, it was motivated in large part by a desire to keep open tools in the hands of the open community and to give the library more control over journal publishing. And this really remains one of the key benefits. Second, and finally for this section, the survey results and comments suggest to us that editors may approach publishing platforms from a task-driven perspective. Regardless of the platform they're using, they're focused on learning how to do a specific task for their journal. And once they learn those steps, they're good to go. This is helpful for us to know as the people who support and often train them to use publishing platforms. So those are the main takeaways from the survey. And now Kristen is going to talk about what we've learned since the migration from the librarian's perspective. So have we as a library publisher experienced the benefits that we anticipated with OJS? We do now have a much closer connection to journal teams. And this is largely because all editors questions now come to us rather than to be press customer support staff. With that said, um, different editors do have their own preferences for working with us, how much contact they have with us and how they get help from us. We work more closely with some than with others, uh, but we do have a better sense overall of what our journal teams are doing. Also, while we thought that there would be more flexibility for journal teams, we think it's really now that we have more flexibility and autonomy to help journal teams because we have more control and ability to work with the OJS platform than we did with Digital Commons platform. So we can offer suggestions of how to work with the platform and we can help editors uh, try new approaches that fit with their workflow and with what we know of the OJS functionality. All of that means that we definitely have more work to do. Again, especially because we are now the customer support. Um, and we also have to say that we kind of wanted this work to grow and wanted more of it. And it came at a time when our library had the capacity for this work to grow. 
In spring 2018, our research and scholarly communication unit was created because of a, a system-wide uh, reorganization. And my position in particular changed so that I have more or less been able to do journal publishing as a full-time role. We do now face some challenges and limitations um, that are becoming more apparent now that all of our journals are using OJF. So one example of a specific practical challenge is related to customizing journals look and feel. Editors have more flexibility to do this with OJF, but as Emily briefly mentioned, they had mixed feelings about how helpful this is. And in the library, we're also limited in how much we can help them. Librarians who have the availability and interest to help journal teams don't know CSS, and staff who have CSS knowledge don't have the availability or capacity to add this to their work. So this may be an area where our expectations with OJS aren't matching up with the reality. An example of a broader, more conceptual challenge is the consistency of services that we offer to all journals. Are we offering more support to journal teams who are in touch with us more? Are other journal editors being left behind? And how much does that matter? And how do we want to address this? So these are more about the type of publishing library, of library publishing service that we want to offer and uh, needing to be sure that we can keep providing those services long-term, especially with the growth that we've seen in the number of journals where we host over just the last two years. So, uh, what are our next plans now that the migration to OJS is done? Well, this brief survey from the spring about experiences using digital commons and OJS has been revealing. It makes us think that it is probably time to learn more about what journal editors need from us. So learn more about what we could do for them, what we could help them to learn and how they would like to learn and be supported. One thing it seems that they may need is more step-by-step -step training and how to uh, documentation for new editors or about new OJS features. In retrospect, this makes a lot of sense because a lot of the questions that we get from editors are about how to do particular tasks, um, but we haven't provided how-tos or links to OJS documentation for editors in a very consistent way. A second example of what they may need is more support for customization, particularly CSS. Customizing journal appearance was something that is more difficult for several of the editors who responded to our survey. Um, but again, learning more about what they would like from us in this area would be helpful. And of course, there will undoubtedly be other things our editors will tell us they would like from us. So last, we want to end with the recommendation to you. If you are wondering whether to migrate your journals to a different platform or wondering what platform to choose for journal hosting. So our experience with Digital Commons and OJS tells us that either platform will work well for journal teams. So we recommend that you choose the platform that fits best with your values as a library publisher and that matches the capacity that you have to do various aspects of publishing work. Thank you, and we look forward to hearing what questions you have for us.